that we're back in Algonquin for the Labor Day long weekend. Uh, at Gray Access Point, it's just a long weekend, so we try to always go to the closest access point to us. We're going back to Greenleaf Lake, the lake I've been to many times. Uh, great fishing there, so probably not going to do a ton of filming this trip because I've heard it like I said, I've, I've been there so many times, I've seen all this, uh, all these sections before. The only thing that's new is this time we're going straight to Greenleaf. We're not uh, taking what I call the scenic route through the Carcajou Lakes and all those. We're just gonna paddle straight up Grand and then do the six kilometer portage into Greenleaf. So, looking forward to it. So for this trip, I'm in my uh, Kuwaitan pack boat. Um, Mark is in his uh, Osprey sole canoe. And uh, in the, my yellow canoe over there, it's uh, Edgar and Tanya coming with us. And uh, that's my uh, Alchemist Mist. that we have to go under. It's about the halfway point of Grand Lake. I think we paddle, Grand Lake we have to paddle about 13 or 14 kilometers I believe. So this is about six, about six kilometers in I think. Looks like the water's so low that I have to get out of this bridge here. I think I might be able to just make it, but it was scraping a little bit. Basically, we're almost done paddling Grand Lake, and uh, then we're just going to probably take a lunch break and then uh, do about six kilometers, including a pretty good hill you have to climb on that portage, but at least it's on a road. Uh, six kilometers into Greenleaf, and then we're camping on Greenleaf for two nights.
like I said, we're just having our lunch break. And uh, then we head up the mountain. 5,070 meters. And I think that's just to the Greenleaf Fork. And then the Greenleaf part is another 800 or 1,000 meters. So about 6K. 400. Only 400? Yeah. Alright, 5 and a half k <laughs> So the board tires are beginning. So we just passed a couple guys going the other direction of Sportage and they just saw a bear said it ran off about 150 feet into the, into the fields on the side here but it's pretty common on this road to come across bears because there's lots of berries in the fields So we just took a break at the spot where uh, the road forks and you have to take a right to go towards Greenleaf, which is pretty much the high point of the portage. So from here, the next kilometer goes way downhill. And then there's another half kilometer and then it forks to the right again to, uh, to the last normal style portage with like you going through the woods with rocks and roots and all that uh, to Greenleaf. So basically the hard part of the portage is done. canoe pack in front of me have legs it's actually Tanya she's just smaller than the backpack she's carrying and we're at Greenleaf absolutely love this lake it's just the right size it's got bass it's got trout it's just gorgeous middle campsite first, it's our favorite campsite. Let's see if uh, anybody's on it. If not, we're going to take it and uh, hopefully catch a fish on our way to it. So the middle site's taken and uh, I could see canoes up at the third site, which is the only, there's only two nice sites on Greenleaf, the second and the third one. And we saw a canoe at it, but we decided to, we're just trolling, so paddle over that direction anyway. And uh, the canoe we saw was people leaving. So looks like we're staying on the uh, third site on Greenleaf. It's actually going to be the first time we've stayed on it. We've always taken the, the middle site before. I think it's easier to get in here when there's two more feet of water. So we're just setting up camp on this little campsite. Got my hammock uh, set up right in front here. Uh, the front of the campsite's really nice. Got these little stone benches around the fire pit. The, uh, the issue with the campsite is uh, once you go up that hill, it looks like there's another sort of section above, but it's really just, uh, it drops on the other side of that peak and there's basically just the toilet on the other side of there. You, not much you can really do about it. So basically the front of it, what you see in the front of this campsite is literally all you get. Compared to the middle campsite, it's uh, absolutely tiny, but we found enough spots for our hammocks, so it'll work. I had to throw a few casts while I was waiting for the fire to get coals for the steaks. And first fish of the trip, a little smallmouth bass on a white paddle tail and a jig head. It's a decent size, yeah? Not bad. 
We've caught smaller. <laughs> there he is. Finished supper. And, uh, the sun's already down, but there's still a bit of light left, so I decided to go out trolling maybe for half an hour. See if we can't catch a trout before uh, the night is over. Boat this morning, just crossing the campsite. Okay, got another small month. seen it yet. He's fighting. Yeah, he's fighting better than the other ones. I think it's just another bass. Just a lot of fight in him. bigger I uh, know the paddle tail <laughs> yeah a good size First or second cast? Second cast. <laughs> so Mark finally gave up and took one of my paddle tails because the uh, second cast. Nice little small mouth. Second cast, though, eh? Just trolling my way to the end of the 
green leaf. My experience is a lot of like little just high cliffs and some rock slides and stuff like that. And there's a lot of small enough bass on the side. Got a few lake trout on the side too, but lake trout I find are closer to the middle campsite is the, where I catch more of those. Got a tiny little rock bass. Actually, yes. for a rock bass, he's not tiny, but cute little fish. Tiny small nut. It's a rock bass. I think. Yeah. It has big red eyes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's a rock bass. Black Fury? Small, small mouth. <laughs> I'm talking. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Little tiny guy. single trout yet this trip. Not a bad one. Diving perch. Something with uh, some fight to it. Well, it's a trout. Kind of foul hooked him. This one, though. Just met up with Mark, uh, let him know that I caught supper and uh, still had a line in the water. Looks like I caught something else. Thought it was a bass, but I haven't seen it yet, so I'm guessing maybe it's a trout. Uh, nope, it's a small buff. Trolling 
going back to camp to another fish, but judging by the two huge jumps he did about 50 feet out, I'm guessing it's a bass. Oh, he wrapped me on a branch. snap yep line snap and your second fish of the trip smallmouth bass Squeeze the lower mouth. Yeah, just hold it tight because he's going to thrash. Fighting. Yeah, it's fine. He, they don't have teeth. They just have like a sandpaper feeling. Mm -hmm. Just squeeze it. You can hold, just hold them by that and then take the hook out. So we just ate that lake trout uh, that I caught earlier for supper with uh, some rice. And uh, Mark uh, cooked it up perfectly. Perfectly fried with a little bit of uh, lemon spice. Really, really good. Now we're just uh, doing a little evening paddle trolling. See if we catch a few more fish. Tomorrow's the last day, so tomorrow uh, we head up. Oh, gave up on uh, trolling the wind tunnels and switched to a, a little rapala. Got something on. Lake trout. Well, sounds like Mark's got something too. Oh, it's not a lake trout, it's a ball fish. Size ball fish. So while I was catching that ball fish, uh, Mark got uh, another light trout. So uh, I'm done. Uh, Fishing for tonight. I'm gonna head back to camp. Mark and uh, Edgar. Looks like they're doing another loop. Um, hopefully Edgar is gonna catch his first lake trip. And uh, so that's it for the, for me fishing wise. Beaver swimming across the lake. So it's Monday morning, we're just packing up the campsite, about to head off basically the same way we came. And that's it for the Labor Day long weekend.
see how low the water is. This uh, sort of dilapidated little <laughs> is normally just barely above the water, if not touching it. That's a good 18 inches, 20 to 2 feet in the air. be able to tell by the breathing this is a very long straight uphill well I probably look like I'm about to have a heart attack but pretty pleased with myself just finished the uh, mountain section of the uh, five and a half kilometer portage or however long it is uh, from Greenleaf towards Grand so I'm at the fork in the road basically from here on out it's downhill whole hill single carry without stopping so pretty happy for a 260 pound man that's not in good physical shape by any means uh happy about it so for a reward i'll go back and uh, help some of the others with their gear like the wind is going to be with us on our paddle back to the truck so it's 11 or 12 kilometers this uh this lake so probably somewhere close to two hours i guess to uh, to make it back yeah i think it does That's exactly it. It's because mine's lower. It doesn't yours flares a little at the in the front? I mean, mine does too, but not as much. I'm paddling a bit to one side. Huh? I'm paddling a bit to one side. Okay. I, I just kind of shifted the length a bit, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> So we're just stuffed under the train tracks in the shade, having a little lunch break, drinking some water. How'd everybody like the weekend? Good? Yeah, great. Yeah, it was, uh, last time we went to Greenleaf, this group, we, uh, we had uh, like 30 degrees with like 100% humidity, pure sunshine and insane bugs. So this was a very different trip. It was about 20 to 23 during the day and there's just no bugs at all. The fishing wasn't as good as I'd hoped, but we still caught lots of fish. We're still able to eat fish, so pretty good trip. So I stopped recording before Edgar was able to point out that uh, he doubled his fishing record. So he had a much, much better uh, trip than any previous fishing trip in his life. I mean, I mean doubling your record, that's that's impressive. Oh, and uh, hashtag, the other guy in the canoe. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the trip from Mark's perspective. He's the other guy in the canoe on YouTube. <laughs> Little homey turtle hanging out in the sun. How's it going, little guy?
if you're in tenure, come around the point. Just got off the clock because there's a lot of people 